This is the grunge. This is the grunge including all the dedicated locomotives I have for it, and no, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is the undecorated RS-11 that will eventually get a sound decoder and get painted for the Tacoma, Puyallup, and DuPont, but that's nowhere near ready. So I thought it was time to get the grunge some power. I decided on an Atlas Master Gold GP40 locomotive for reasons I'll cover in a moment. Now for the past few years, I've been buying Athern Genesis models with Tsunami Sound almost exclusively. So when this Atlas arrived, I wanted to see how the detail and sound compared to the Atherns. So that's what we're going to do. Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot, where we give model railroaders the knowledge, tools, and services they need to build a realistic layout and the motivation to work on it right now. The Atlas locomotive I bought is from their Master Gold line. It comes with a Lock Sound 5 DCC decoder installed. It's Atlas's top of the line, and I found it for a relatively good price, on sale for $209, while the MSRP is $299.99. Now, part of that discount may have been because it's decorated for Penn Central, I'm not sure. Now, before I get the snide comments, I know that the Penn Central was a show of a railroad, but it's also the first railroad I remember, so I've got a little bit of a soft spot for it. And I've always liked the Mating Worms logo with the red in it instead of just the plain white, so this model spoke to me. Also, I can make it very dirty, which will be realistic, and it will fit right in on the grunge. So spare me the Penn Central sucks diatribes. Let's get started with the comparison. Now, right out of the shipping box, the Atlas compared favorably to Ather. The box is much smaller, but on the inside, it's still packaged very well, including solid plastic packaging. It's even screwed to the base to prevent damaging movement during shipping. As we get the GP40 out of the package, let me say right away that this is not an apples to apples comparison. The Atlas model is a GP40, while the Athern is a GP40-2, so there will be minor body differences, but those shouldn't impact the review. This is the older model. This is the Athern Genesis with a Tsunami 2 decoder in it, and it's now about a year old. This is the Atlas Gold model with the ESU decoder in it that I received just recently. Both are using the factory installed speakers, and that'll be important in a little while. Both of these are also the high-end, top-of-the-line models for the respective company, and so my expectation is that the level of detail level of decoration and attention to detail will be similar. Now I'm gonna go through these things in no particular order, it's just more as I notice things as I go through the model. For the chassis system locomotive, I know that this is the prototypical horn that came on the locomotive for this particular road number. Now I'm no expert on Penn Central locomotives, but from photos I've found, the horn seems to be at least close to the prototype. In terms of the details on the sides, the paint and font is correct for the numbers on both locomotives. Both have the front designation marker and builder's plate details. Further back, both have details for the fuel filling locations and so on. On the Athern, there are markings for the lease information, which is not there for the PC locomotive. Now the grime makes it hard to tell from this photo I found of the prototype, but judging from other photos of locomotives in the same series, that is an omission. In terms of detail on the trucks, I can actually see markings for castings here on the trucks of the Athern. I don't see anything similar to that on the Atlas, but I was also unable to determine from photos if that's just prototypical. When we come to the detail on the piping that goes between the brake cylinders here, there is a wire between the parts on each locomotive, even if it's a little harder to see here on the PC version because of the black trucks. Both locomotives come with the fairly typical plastic KD compatible couplers, which I always replace with actual KDs, so no winner there. Looking at the handrails, they're both made of acetoplastic and are of a prototypical size for both handrails and the stanchions. No winner there either. In terms of paint, both models have good coverage, but the paint on the Athern's a little thick and does heavily cover some of the details, as you can see here between the doors. The paint thickness on the Atlas locomotive seems to be better. Now granted, there's only one color on the Penn Central locomotive, it's just black, whereas I'm sure there are at least three coats of paint to replicate the far more complex chassis scheme on the Athern model. Let's check out the top of the model now. Here, both models seem to have similar detail. In both cases, the fan detail looks good to my eye. With the Athern, it seems like the detail in there is made up of separate parts. With the Atlas model, it's hard to tell due to everything being black, but either way, they both look good. Both models also have details to represent the lift rings on the roof. If we move to the front of the model now, to me the detail on both models seems pretty good, but there are some differences. The chassis has the detail painted to represent the class lights, while on the Atlas it's just the plastic molding and everything is black. 
Would have been nice if they'd done something to differentiate the class lights. I might be able to help that with a dab of gloss coat on my own. Moving to other details, the Atherin locomotive has the ends of the MU cables painted with silver detail. Now, while cables are present on the Atlas, they don't paint them in any way. The Chessy model has the prototypical Chessy rock pilot on the front, while the prototype PC unit didn't have any kind of plow on the front, so this model is correct. While I do like the detail on the windshield wipers for the Atlas better, based on photos, they don't look pretty prototypically correct. Now, personally, I'm not all that worried about whether the wipers are an exact match, though your mileage may vary. The rear detail is similar to the front, so I won't spend time on that. The Atherin gets the edge here based on the painted details. If we spin the models around, over here on the doors, we can see there are similar warning decals on here on the engineer's side, which did not seem to appear on the other side. I don't know if that's prototypical or not. Of course, the GP40-2 has the sight glass on the engineer's side that was used to check fluid levels. The GP40 did not have that on the prototype, so the model is also correct there. So from a purely visual standpoint, they're roughly on par with one another. The Chessie locomotive has some additional prototype-specific details that the Atlas doesn't, but the detail differences between the units aren't really glaring. I will say that one noticeable difference is that on the Ather model, everything came installed, including the cab shades. While on the Atlas locomotive, you do have to install the sunshade yourself. Now, installation was easy. You just push the pins on the shades into the holes and you're done. But at this price point, you kind of expect that everything would be done for you. Another major thing I wanted to compare was the sound. Now I will say that I find that nearly every sound locomotive comes with the sound settings way too loud. But for this video, I haven't modified the volume setting for the Atlas Loco, and I also set the settings for the Athen locomotive back to the factory defaults. For the purposes of the review, I wanted to compare the startup sequence for each engine, the bell sound, the horn, and the prime mover sounds. Finally, I wanted to compare how the locomotives ran. I consisted them together so that I could see how they ran at the same throttle setting. As you can see here, they both run smoothly, but the Athern runs at a higher speed than the Atlas. Now, I should note that the acceleration and deceleration settings are set higher on the Atlas than they are on the Athern, but even at speed, the Atlas creeps along way more slowly. 
To see if this was a manufacturer thing, I also checked the Atlas GP40 against another older Atlas GP38 model, and the newer model still ran at a much slower speed compared to the older one as well. Speed matching this locomotive could be a challenge, but since I intend to run it solo on the grunge most of the time, it shouldn't be an issue. For a long time, I bought Atlas engines almost exclusively, but then they seem to stagnate a little bit while other manufacturers, including the Athern Genesis line, continued to improve. It's nice to see that the newer Atlas locomotives can at least hold their own against the Athern Genesis line. I can't swear that this is the norm, but I got this Atlas locomotive for about $100 less than a comparable Genesis locomotive, and for that kind of savings, I can overlook the minor differences and the odd deficiency. Hope this comparison was useful for you, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.